In this video, we're going to be looking at topic 2A, the alkali metals, which is group 1 of the periodic table. And this is part of the Edexcel IGCSE chemistry course. Now, the content covered in this video is going to be both the single and the double outcomes, as the outcomes span both of these papers. So if you are a single or a double student, then this is the video for you. So we're going to be looking at how we use their similarities and reactions to provide evidence for their recognition as a family of elements. We're going to be looking at the different reactions of group one metals and how that links to their reactivity and how we can use our knowledge of the trends of group one to predict the reactions of other alkali metals. So the alkali metals are group one of the periodic table and they are lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium. Now in an exam, it is likely that you could be asked about these three, lithium, sodium, and potassium in terms of the chemistry of these. For rubidium, cesium, and francium, these will be the ones that you will be generally asked to predict. So these are the ones that you should have knowledge of and the bottom three are the ones that you may be asked to predict. So let's start off by looking at the physical properties of our alkali metals. So the alkali metals share similar physical properties and they show a trend or a pattern as you go down the group. So as you go from lithium down to francium, they will show a trend and the first trend that we're going to look at is the melting and boiling point. So these are going to decrease as you go down the group. So lithium will have quite a high melting point and it will get lower and lower as you get down to francium. The densities will increase down the group, but they are not quite as regular as some of the other trends. Whilst the overall trend is going to be an increase in density, it is not an increase of, say, 20 each time. So there is not quite as strong a pattern there. All of the metals are very soft and they can all be cut using a knife. So we can manipulate them and cut them quite easily. They are very shiny when they are freshly cut, but they are going to tarnish very quickly when they are exposed to air. So tarnish is another way of saying they are going to corrode when they come into contact with air. Remember, we don't call it rusting unless we are talking about iron. So just to give you an idea, you can see that the melting and the boiling points are increasing, sorry, decreasing as you go down the group, whereas the density is going to be increasing. In terms of how we store them, because the alkali metals are extremely reactive, with oxygen and water, they must be stored in oil. And the oil is there to stop the water or the oxygen from reaching the metal. Because if the water or oxygen reaches the metal, we can get explosive reactions. So of course we want to limit that for safety reasons. So we store them in oil to stop that. Rubidium and cesium, as well as being stored in oil, are typically also kept in a sealed glass tube, and that is to stop the possibility of any oxygen. So these are usually kept under a vacuum. If any water comes into contact with the alkali metal, we're going to form a metal hydroxide, and that could cause burns if it is handled incorrectly, because metal hydroxides are corrosive. So we should always be using the correct prefer personal protective equipment when you are using any of these substances. So safety goggles, gloves, lab coat, all of these should be used at all times. So when we put these elements into the same group of the periodic table, we link them because they all have similar chemical properties. And the reason that they all have similar chemical properties is due to the fact that they all have one electron in their outer shell. This is a very, very common exam question where they will typically ask why a certain group of elements 
have the same chemical or have similar chemical properties and it is all to do with the fact that they have the same number of electrons in their outer shell. You can specify one, but of course, remember if they're talking about another group of the periodic table, you have to make sure that you get the number correct. So you, some, most of the time you can just say the same number. So these metals are going to react with water to form a metal hydroxide and they will have the formula MOH where M is any of the alkali metals. So for example, you could have KOH or NaOH, potassium and sodium hydroxide. They're going to react with oxygen to form a metal oxide and that will have the formula M2O. So for example, K2O or Na2O. They will react with the halogens, which is group 7. And if you're not sure about that, you can check out the videos on topic 2B and that will give you some more information on the halogens. And they're going to form compounds with the formula MX. So for example, KCL or NABR. And they're going to form ionic compounds and they will all contain M1 plus ions because they have one outer electron which is lost and that forms a one plus ion. So let's just look a little bit more in detail about their reactions. So when they react with water, we're going to form a metal hydroxide and hydrogen gas. Now you can test that the gas is hydrogen because that is going to burn with a squeaky pop. And the metal hydroxide is going to be an alkali. And you can test that using universal indicator. And we should see blue or purple color being formed. As you go down the group from lithium to sodium to potassium and so on, the reactions become more vigorous. So that means that we may see some fizzing for lithium, whereas for potassium, we see a flame being formed. And that is because the hydrogen is being produced so rapidly and with a very high temperature change, we get the hydrogen actually catching fire or igniting when we get more reactive metals being produced. So if we compare sodium, if we have sodium reacting with water, we're going to form sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. Now the sodium is going to float on the water and it is going to melt into a ball. We see fizzing and that is due to the production of the hydrogen gas and the sodium moves around on the surface until it is all used up and then it disappears. And the solution that is formed is sodium hydroxide. Now these three points are your observations. So a typical exam question will ask you, give two observations that you would see when sodium reacts with water. So you could be saying it melts into a ball, it floats on the water, it moves around on the water, or it disappears. One thing that you cannot say as an observation is sodium hydroxide is formed because you cannot physically see that happening. So this is the product, but it is not an observation. If I compare that to potassium, potassium will do very much the same thing where we get it floating on the water and we get a reaction. However, for potassium, we see a lilac flame. So the potassium is so reactive that it actually catches fire. So lithium reacts similar to sodium, but it is quite it is a little bit slower and it doesn't melt and we form lithium hydroxide and hydrogen. So again, these are your observations. And as we said, lithium reacts much faster. So it is going to cause the hydrogen to be ignited and we see a lilac flame. Again, that's your observation. And we form potassium hydroxide and hydrogen. 
Rubidium and cesium will react even more violently and these will tend to be explosive. But remember, you're going to more likely be asked to predict these than to say what observations you would get. All alkali metals will react with oxygen and air and they will cause them to form a dull metal oxide on the surface and we see this as a tarnish. So this causes them to lose their shine. So when they are freshly cut, they are shiny metals, but as soon as they start to react with oxygen, they tarnish and they become dull. If we heat the metals with oxygen, then we see a flame colour. And you can see that we get this general reaction where we have our metal oxide being formed. And we see a flame when we are heating it with oxygen. Lithium will burn with a red flame, sodium will burn with a yellow flame, and potassium will burn with a lilac flame. And you will come back to these in topic 2H, which is chemical tests. And we use these as a way to actually identify the alkali metal that could be an assault. Now, all group one metal ions are colourless. So their compounds are either white or they are colourless themselves. If they are combined with a negative ion that has a colour, they will show that. So, for example, the dichromate ion is orange now, you're not expected to know that. You would be told this information in the question. So if I react the dichromate with potassium to form potassium dichromate, it is also going to be orange because the potassium doesn't provide a colour. Manganate is purple, so potassium manganate is also purple because, the, again, the potassium does not give the colour. So let's summarise the properties of group one. Group one are all metals. They are all soft and they have mel melting points and boiling points, which are quite low. They have to be stored out of contact with water or in air. So we store them under oil or in a vacuum. They react very rapidly with air to form a metal oxide. They will react with water to form an alkaline solution and we can check the pH using an indicator. And they will also make a hydrogen gas as well. And again, we can test that because it burns with a pop. We see an increase in reactivity as you go down the group. You do not have to explain that. You just have to be able to state it. And they're going to form compounds, which the ion has a one plus ion. And their compounds typically are white or colourless and will produce colourless solutions. So we can now use all of that information to predict the properties of francium. Now, francium is an extremely rare metal. We do not have a lot of francium on the entire of the planet Earth, so we don't ever use it in experiments. There is about 20 grams of francium available on Earth, so you can see that it's extremely, extremely rare. So it has not been properly or thoroughly analysed. But because it is in group one, we can make some predictions. So we would predict that it is soft. We would predict it has a melting point around room temperature and a density just over 2 grams per centimetre cubed. It's going to be a silvery metal, but as soon as you cut it, it will tarnish instantly. It will react extremely violently and we would make francium hydroxide and hydrogen. It's going to be more reactive than cesium because it is lower down the reactivity series. Francium hydroxide would be very soluble and it would form a very strongly alkaline solution and it would form compounds that are white or colourless and would dissolve in water to give colourless solutions. So that is summarising all of the information that we know about group one and applying that to the most bottom member of group one and taking all of the trends and the patterns that we know to predict the properties. So let's have a look at the past paper question for this topic. So this is from the June 2015 paper. So lithium, potassium and cesium are three metals that are in group one of the periodic table.
A small piece of each metal is placed in water and separate large troughs and we want to complete the table by giving the correct metal for the description. So let's look at the three descriptions. First of all, we have explodes on contact with water. We have fizzes gently or reacts violently and forms a lilac flame. Now remember, reactivity increases down the group. So the one that is the most reactive is going to be at the bottom of the periodic table. Now you will have your periodic table with you in the exam, but just as a reminder, we've got lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium. You will always be able to check your periodic table. You're not expected to memorize these. So the one that is going to explode on contact with water, that's going to be the most reactive. So that's going to be the one near this, the bottom. So that is going to be cesium. We know for certain that potassium gives us a lilac flame. So the bottom one must be potassium. Leaving us with the center one, the fizzing gently, where well, we know it's going to be very, the least reactive. So it's going to be near the top and it is at the top of the group, and that is a lithium. So part B, give the name and the formula of the gas formed when potassium reacts with water. Well, when any alkali metal reacts with water, they make the metal hydroxide and hydrogen. And the formula, remember, hydrogen is diatomic, so it is H2. Please make sure that you put the two. Or if you just put H, you're throwing away a mark. For part two, give the name and formula of the compound formed when lithium reacts with water. So this isn't the gas this time, this is the actual compound form and we know it is a metal hydroxide. So we just have to put in the name of the metal. So we make lithium hydroxide and it is going to have the formula Li OH. And for part three, you describe how you could show that an alkaline solution is formed when cesium reacts with water. So we want to be basically saying, how can we check the pH? So we can add universal indicator or use litmus paper. Either one would be acceptable or any other named indicator and it will turn blue. And if it turns blue, that tells us that we have an alkali being formed. So there are our answers to the June 2015 paper. You can check them if you've been working through. That's everything for topic 2A, the alkali metals. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below and we hope to see you back on the channel soon.